Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Mental Mobility Podcast, episode number 119. Today is my son's birthday, so first off, happy birthday to Phoenix. September 20th is an exciting day for him. I'm going to show you around the house, but I can't leak that because we always decorate uh, for their birthday. But today I'm just going to talk. I don't have a a message, I don't have a a topic that I Google to make sure I hit the algorithm. I don't have anything like that. I can give you a life update of what's pretty much been going on and how everything is without having to, I guess you can say, um, niche it into some type of whatever they tell me to do. Because honestly, I really, I've been having a tough time trying to think of things to talk about. And there's a lot of times that I, you know, I'll Google what are good topics that people want to listen to, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to force it. I don't want to do anything where it's like, hey, what's your best five tips to feel better? What are they? Uh, they're there, you know, and for a YouTube channel and for a podcast and for you guys, the viewers, it's kind of what you have to do. Right? People don't know that part of like, um, they think a vlog just has to be a vlog. Well, people, I'm not really that interesting, right? I'm not also one of the first vloggers, so people don't really care, right? And if most people right now already shut it off, I hope you don't. I hope you, you hang out and listen, but for the most part, there's times that things are being created as I create, and that's how I, you know, like to do things sometimes because if I overthink it and if I look up and research topics, it's not genuine anymore, right? It's not really what's happening. It's not really what's going on in your life. It's not really what you want to talk about. And to me, I think by speaking and you could also say freestyling, you can find what it is you're looking for. Just like when you have an idea. Right, and you have to draft it out, or I always talk, me and my brother talk about this all the time. It's like when you draft out a a project, say like their art design, he'll go through a thousand drafts and think he has the right one, and then it's not it. Right, and it's not it. You keep doing it over and over, and as annoying as it is, you do it over and over. When you do stand up comedy, right, and you're up on stage, and I've done stand up, you guys know I did stand up. When you write a joke, the premise is all you have, this idea. And then from there you cater and you tackle this joke and then you try it on stage with the hope of it being good. And then it's not. What do you do? Do you trash it or do you rewrite it? You're gonna rewrite it. And then you rewrite it to hopefully it's something, but the reason you're rewriting it is because you actually think it's funny yourself. Like you think that joke is funny, you think there's something there, so you try it over and over and over. And there's a point where sometimes you have to throw or toss a joke, but there's times where that joke becomes something. And then when it's even really funny, you'll tweak it again. And you'll tweak it again to make it funnier, whether it's the tone, whether it's the timing, whether it's a word or two inside that joke that you can change to make it better. You know, it's the same thing with this. Like, you don't really know what's going to come of this video. I just know that I need to put one out today. You know, it's just my job to do that. And that's the hard part. I've been here and, you know, I have a busier life now. Way busier than I did last year. It's fun. You know, it's fun. I get to work. I hang out and I work and I make cocktails and I clean up people's cucumber tikka masala. Fucking throwing that shit out some chard and ketchup in my hands all the time. I throw beverages and wasted fucking alcohol all over the place, but I don't mind it, it goes fast. I've done it for years. It is different, and the reasoning it is different is because I don't have to talk to a lot of people. (laughs) It's pretty comforting. Like, being a business owner, being someone of influence, uh, being, they would call us micro influencers now, right? I'd say in 2000, 2010 to 2000 crank days, I was an influencer. I was influencer within the gym. I was an influencer within the racing scene. I was an influencer within men's health. I've been an influencer within fitness. I, I would like to say that I was, you know, and now no one 
cares what I influence about except for you guys here and my influencing is not really influencing I'm just telling a story and hopefully tell people to or ask people to listen to this journey right listen to this this part of it but in that time it took a lot of energy for me to talk right for me to be there for me to be present all the time whether it's inside or outside of the gym whether it's a function or even just going to a supermarket right you always had to be on like the show was always on and it just like you know taking a break from that not saying that i'm not going to do it or i don't love that right it's fun to to be on but at times there has to be an off Right, there has to be an off switch. And right now I'm taking a power down restart and it's gonna take time. They, you know, they, there's things that you can do, there's things that you can take, there's things that you think that you may need to do because you used to do it. And I took that step back, you know, and I, but the thing is like, here's the one thing I guess I can talk about that I was thinking about was I always find myself trying to be the hero, right? I always find myself trying to be the savior, the person that can accomplish the uncom uncomplishable, the person that will help you through a, a tough time or a struggle. And I catch myself a lot. Like, and it could be on a small scale and it could be on a large scale, right? It could be from listening to someone at work and they start opening up and start telling me the stories and you know this is why they did this and now my life is doing you know people just they'll just talk uh, it's my face I guess it's a very uh, I don't know acceptable comforting face they just trust it so they'll start talking and usually I'll be like you know what I feel the same way and here's what I did to get through those struggles or as people ask or talk about gym stuff and losing weight and how they want to be better and how they want to. And I want to go, man, I'll write you a program. I can do this and I can do that. And this is what I do to help you do this. And I can do this and I know I can help you. I know I can be the hero. I know I can do this. Instead I do, damn, it's crazy. I mean, just keep going. No one at work knows that I was that level of a trainer. <laughs> no one at work knows that I had my own gym, maybe one or two. But honestly, I, they really don't care. They don't judge the ones that I've told. They're just like, it's kind of like, whether they didn't listen or this didn't matter. And it didn't matter to me either, you know? I want, but I want to be that person that kind of like jumps in all the time. And like, let me help you do something. Let me help you do this. And I don't, and I don't. I shut my mouth, I listen to what they're saying and then I let them figure it out for themselves. <laughs> if it's life or death situation, I think of course I will jump in. If they're thinking about someone said something a little stupid and I was like, mm, maybe not a good idea, you know? And I'm not like one to, to hold back either. I will definitely let them know that if it's stupid, it's stupid. If it's not stupid, that's the type of, um, I guess, persona that I have there um, within, within range. You know, I, I just speak the truth as, as always. And then another moment of being a hero is during like PTA stuff, right? I want to fucking make this the best X, Y, Z. And I put all this pressure trying to get it done. I mean, I have to get it done, right? If it's it, objective here as running the PTA, like we have an event, the event still must go on. We just can't cancel it. But there's a lot of things that I try to do and take on that I have to really pull myself back and not do it because I want to do more, I want to give more, I want to be, just to help people, almost like take the work off them, and I'll do all the work. You know, and we all know, if you know me, that's what I love to do, right? If we had a, a crank party or an event at the gym, no one really can help me because I don't know what, I always go, I don't even know what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to figure it out. And I'm just trying to move around, trying to do things, and people jump in and try to help me, but I was never really good at giving direction when it came to events or parties because I wanted to not burden people with work because I would rather just do it myself and try to get everything done so everyone else can just sit back and relax. And that's the, the personality type that I have to change and that I have and am changing, you know, whether it's delegating work or make not just kind of not doing it and just leaving it be, you know, and seeing that there's not a big 
deal or a big difference from just leaving it alone. And now well, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. The only place I will be a hero, and I try my hardest and my best to be one, is at home. And that's it. You know, I try to be the hero to my kids. I try to be the hero to my wife. I try to be the hero to myself. Within my own household, I believe that's where my heroism or my heroic nature should come from or should be. It can be right here, proving to my kids that you can count on that. Right? I will be here. I will help you through anything. For the rest of your fucking life, I can be and will be your hero. And I feel like that's where it counts the most. I do have this heroic nature of trying to save people and save the world and save everyone, right? Hence why I make these videos. I make them because I hope to one day save a life. You no, know, but I can't take it to the point where I'm going to show up to your house and stop you from doing the things you're doing. Right? I can just influence you through video, through stories, through messages to help you be better, to whatever better is for you, you know, and just so you can be happy with what it is you're living for. If you can even be happy, can you even be happy? Is, is there such thing? Like, can you actually be happy? Well, we all know that's a choice. Be happy as shit. You just gotta choose to be it. You know, I'm not here to tell you that I'm happy all the time because it's fucking wrong. I can tell you I'm more angry. Um, than I have been in this present couple months. Nothing wrong with it. No reason why. Maybe just tired. Uh, not having a lot of time to myself. You know, that always, I guess, can do it. Right? I'm not getting the time that I want. I'm in a rush a lot. Um, trying to fill and do things within the, the downtime that I do have. I have, you know, things to do. So it's not even like I do get that break. But I'm working at it. You know, I'm working at understanding what's happening and how I'm feeling and now how do I change that? And honestly, what I think I'm going to do is really just set a time because I know I can't have a full day. Right? There's got to be that block of time where I have guilt free alone time, like guilt free. Dad needs to just be by himself in the quiet and it's got to be multiple times per day, whether it's 15 minutes or whether it's three hours, four hours. But I gotta start blocking that time again because I have stopped doing it. Since the school started and the PTA stuff, I go right from here, right? I am wake up, walk the dogs, you know my routine, I've you've seen it all. Now I start going to the computer and I start doing work for the PTA because I can't work during regular work. And now I come back home, eat dinner, cook dinner, and now I'm doing PTA stuff again. Like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that much work. But I guess that's what I got into. And at the same day, watching my kids smile or being a part of it and kind of seeing how things develop is pretty cool for them to see too, being a part of this um, developmental stage of being a parent. I mean, this is where I want to do because I, I like parties, I like events, I like doing stuff like that. Um, and I like to see where it comes from and or allowing myself to give people a different experience. You know, because a lot of times people do, you know, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, well, we always have this Halloween party. You know it. It's going to be great. We always have this. I always have the August party. And um, for my dad in, uh, in August in New Jersey, but we always try to recreate these moments, right? We always try to recreate the same feeling. We try to recreate the same patterns. The August party was the August party because it was a time that we would just get hammered and drunk and <laughs> hang out with my dad and my uncles and my family and we just eat and sing and People would dance and piss their pants because it was just a debauchery. A debacle? Debacle, no, whatever. A debacle, but it was so fun as a kid. And then as we got older, it was funner because now you're illegal to allowed to drink and we would just throw our own party within a party. And now we're older and it's like, oh, now we understand why everyone stopped drinking because <laughs> it kind of switched. It went from like parents drinking to the kids playing the kids drinking, the parents kind of drinking. So that was like a fun, crazy moment. And then it became the parents only drank wine and water or juice. And then the kids kept drinking. And then now no one's drinking. And it just isn't the same. But we try to recreate it, right? We try to recreate this 
feeling of what we missed because we don't want to miss it. We want it to be the same. But you're not really recreating, right? No. What, I try, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to do here is I don't want to recreate something old. I want to create something new. I want to create a new experience for the students, for the parents. I want to create something different for the students, something they've never really seen and or not used to. And a lot of people don't like that. Right? A lot of people don't like that change. It's like, because we used to have a haunted house and we used to have this. And we, I was like, I get it. And I love the team that we have because they're very open to the change too. Right? It's like, it's what they used to have. But of course, they've experienced it a thousand times. But I'm sure it's hard for them to understand that it's going to change too. And like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the same thing that someone else has done because we can do better. We can change things for the better. We could change things that may completely suck, but at least we know we tried something different. And you can apply that to anything. You know, try, we try to recreate all these moments in our lives. And obviously, you know it. <laughs> Fucking, we're, we're creatures of habit. Like, I go here on Fridays and I drink this. I go here on Saturdays and this is where I, the salon I go to and this is where, this is my gym, right? Recreate the same feeling. We try to find that feeling. People say that all the time about crank, right? You're trying to find it. You're trying to recreate it. The best advice I can tell you is that you'll never find it. You'll never find crank again. You cannot. You can have any other gym you want. You can have any other person or workout, exactly the same workout you did. You'll never, and I'll tell anyone, you'll never ever in your life recreate crank it is merely impossible why because crank was a feeling crank was an emotion crank was its own being you guys and i'm talking to the people that have or have been or have been a part of crank you understand that you were crank it wasn't me it wasn't the coaches it wasn't our workouts it was you you guys were the reason there was that energy you filled this place with love. You filled that place with care. You filled that place with so much energy because you enjoyed being there that it created this bubble that was very contagious. And by you expressing it, by wearing it, by showing it, by doing it, people probably hated you. They probably hated you at parties because all you talked about was crying. But you created it. You made it what it was. People say it was me. Nah. I just led you there. When all of those people were together, just doing the same thing, with the same mindset and the same love, and the same share, you created an energy bubble that made it what it was. That's what I'm trying to do here, right? It's to create moments where everyone is having so much fun and there's so much connective energy that it becomes a thing. And hopefully creating a memorable moment. <laughs> Did I say that? Memorable moment, another bubble. So think about it today. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not here to, I'm just talking. I, I actually enjoyed this. I'm, I was very not going to do it today, but I actually enjoyed just talking and whatever came out of it came out of it. So think about how you can apply that today. Like, where is it that you're trying to recreate something over and over and over again? It's just not happening. Maybe it's time to change. Maybe it's time to change your mindset. Maybe it's something that you're trying to find and do, but the world or God doesn't have that in his plan for you no more. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you for listening to episode number 119. I think it's 119. I'm not sure. You can check over there what time it is. And I'll see you guys later. Till next time, I have a great we have a great guest coming in. She has a huge story. Uh, I have her interviewing on Thursday. So I'll be out not next week, but the week after. And uh, very excited to listen to this story, having to deal with her brother, loss of her brother. Um, and they just knew that it was coming. And having to live with that, um, understanding where their, their minds as a family was going and dealing with that uh, from the opposite side of the effect of suicide is is very real so i can't wait and i'll see you guys later like tag subscribe i say tag what's i mean comment review you have a lot of stuff to do so I'm leave that in your hands comment subscribe like or review the podcast and i'll see you guys later peace out Ouch.